it hasn't gone notice. It is not going to notice that we're putting these out there. So uh, you should feel good about that. I feel I do. So okay. Continue on, Mike. All right. Um, for those who don't know Prisk, um, Prisk is 28 years old now this year, uh, next November. Uh, we started this in 1995, then a fourth grade teacher, Candace Jennings, Candy, had the idea for a native plant garden on the uh, school campus. Uh, they didn't know what to do with this property. They might have put in a parking lot. Just imagine that. Uh, so we needed another parking lot there, not like we needed a hole in the head. But she thought of this native garden. And she got a hold of Theater of Pain Foundation at the time, 1995, and uh, asked them for assistance. They got a hold of me because they knew I lived in Long Beach. And the head of the uh, Theater of Pain in those days, Kevin Connolly, uh, who wrote the, the book on wildflowers, California wildflowers, got a hold of me and said, could you assist this gal, Mike? So I got a hold of her. And I went to the property and I stared through the chain link fence and I first saw this flat dirt with one uh, ulnus rhombifolia on the property that looked kind of sick from the watering. It was just one plant besides the weeds and it was flat. I looked at that and I thought, boy, oh boy, what a blank slate, right? So I got a hold of her, let's plant out the garden. Four of us planted it out basically in 1995, 96, 97. And uh, I gradually took over as sole director and steward of the garden, which I still am. I publicize the garden. I get people to our open house every year, two open houses. And I want everybody in within the sound of my voice to come either March 26th this year or April 2nd, two Sundays in a row, one to four, Free admission, come on in. We accept donations, of course. Uh, it's a nonprofit, it's a school. So, but uh, you can come and we'll knock your socks off with our wildflower display. They're coming up everywhere. As they say in show business, it'll be a boffo show. I mean, this year, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a wipeout. So, uh, there's a lot to look at. Now, here, coming to the present, we're near present. We got an idea to do the creek in Prisk. We've got 7,500 square feet and it's all divided into plant communities and uh, all that. And uh, we put in a pond very early, about 1998, large fish pond. And I'm glad we have it. And there are a royal chub in the pond. They're native fish, there are creeks and streams. I got special letter from Fish and Wildlife to collect them. I did it by the book. Went to San Juan Creek in Orange County, collected the fish, two dozen, and they've been breeding ever since, many years. And I wanted everything native in the garden, critters and uh, plants, and that's what I have. There's about 300 species of plants in the garden, uh, going from the coast to the desert. So anyway, I got an idea for a creek, and we had veggie gardens in this area too, where these boys and girls are standing. We had uh, raised bed, uh, veggie gardens at first, but the teachers were using them spasmodically. And I thought, and they were leaving them and not harvesting them. And they went to weeds and I had to clean them up. And I thought enough of that, let's make a creek. And that'd have been much more fun anyway. Uh, so we have a, a, the creek now is flowing to the uh, pond and it gets recirculated with a bilge pump in the pond with two solar panels in the back. You can see the solar panels on our, uh, very good, thank you with that little marker there, um, uh, on top of our shed, uh, our storage shed. And that's all it needs to run that pump. It's a uh, 800 gallons per hour. And uh, it's the water's brought by the plumbing that I put in. I put in a large bunch of marine plumbing of different sizes. It's brought up by the bilge pump to the top of the creek, flows down the creek, and it gets recirculated again with this bilge pump. I use about, sometimes if I'm lucky, uh, the bilge pump won't burn out before a year, but I'll sometimes use two bilge pumps a year. They just burn out. They're not meant to be used that much. You know, they're on boats 
from a battery and they're supposed to pump the bilge water out of the bottom of a boat. That's what we have because we have solar panels. There's no electricity in the garden. So it's an engineering lesson too. And I also ask the kids, what brings the uh, water back down after it's brought to the top? And in, invariably, some, they all look at one another and someone will come up with gravity. Yeah, gravity does it. It brings it down and goes back up. Okay. So this was a groundbreaking we had before the official groundbreaking. I bought the kids all shovels and uh, these little carts. And uh, they started uh, just digging in the soil. And it was all ceremonial. Uh, you know, uh, we weren't really too ready to go with the project yet because I didn't have the Conze grant. I'm gonna go, uh, we can go next. Okay, this is our official groundbreaking with our district photographer on the right. This is our uh, former principal, Damon Jesperson. He went to Whittier Elementary and I gave him a plan for Whittier to do a nature center on that campus, a native plant garden. Uh, they call them schoolyard habitats, by the way, and I love that term. It describes it more accurately than native plant garden, because you've got this schoolyard habitat, which means, you know, you're using the, uh, the, the schoolyard for education and for edification. I tell people um, a lot that immersing children in nature is therapeutic and it's educational, just on its own. And the kids are very happy to always come in here. Uh, just uh, unsolicited remarks when the kids come into the garden. One boy looked at me and said, this is my happy place. Now, I can't buy that with a billion bucks. The kids come up with that. A girl told me, I want to live in here. I mean, you know, I couldn't write that stuff myself. I mean, this is, these are testimonials that I'm very proud of. So I feel like I've done something for children. Um, they are now, there is now an idea to put kids in these gardens because it is therapeutic. It calms them down, it makes them slow down and do observations better, and it makes them more cooperative. Now you tell me if, if that's not a desirable outcome with children. I mean, I, I think it is. In the back of the uh, principal is our, uh, fish pond and we had the, this one cover uh, before. I'm going to get a larger cover and make it more permanent. The raccoons get into the pond all the time. They ravage everything. So that's what the cover is for. Okay. This is our official groundbreaking. You can see the little girl in the center using a shovel and digging the uh, trench. Okay. We can move this. Okay, Brent is an excellent uh, audio visual aid here. Yeah. Congratulations. I'll do my best. Yeah, no, be you're, best this friend. is perfect. Uh, okay, we can play this video. All right. It's kind of jerky, but the kids are having fun and they're finding earthworms while they're digging the creek uh, channel. He's acting like he struck gold or something. That's me. This yeah, boy found an earthworm and he acted like he struck gold. <laughs> anyway, the kids had a ball digging that channel. I brought in a lot of fill dirt. That's the first thing I did when I got the Conzi grant. I got a Conzi grant of $7,100. It turned out to be about, I don't know, maybe 12 grand worth. If I'd have had to buy all of the rock that we got donated, for example, I got a lot of rock donated from someone's backyard, uh, some two, 300 pound rock. Me and a friend uh, brought them there in two truckloads in, wait a minute, two, about 12 truckloads, two uh, trucks, six loads a piece, large rock, okay, that lined the channel of the creek. I brought in a lot of fill dirt to the left of where I'm standing. There's a mule fat growing there. I'm leaning on the mule fat. Uh, there's a large bioswale that I dug out. I tossed the dirt from the bioswale uh, up onto the creek to make fill dirt and to make a nice fall, as the plumbers call it, uh, down to the pond. 
Uh, and these, this is some of the rock. You'll see the, this, this rock here was brought in with a forklift. I bought this one at the Gardena Landscape Supply. That's an 1800 pound rock. And the guy came in with a large forklift. Part of the grant involved me buying large sheets of plywood to cover the gravel in it. Uh, to gravel in the, uh, in the uh, garden. I'm muted. Go ahead. Somebody's saying something. Okay. Uh, to cover the gravel in the garden, otherwise this large forklift with a boulder would have made big ruts in the garden. So part of the grant was buying sheets of plywood. So who knew, you know? So there it is. That's a, uh, like I said, 1700 pound rock. The kids dubbed it the baked potato rock by the way, uh, right away. And by the way, I envisioned kids sitting on a rock and watching the creek go by. That's something I wanted to really uh, show and provide for the kids. Uh, right next to me is a large branch of sycamore. That's not a trunk, that's a branch from a large sycamore that I got from the uh, San Juan Creek in Orange County. I had to have it. <laughs> My buddy and I dragged it back in the back of his truck and now people are sitting on it. You'll see a picture of that later. You know, do the next picture. Right. Yeah, did you, sorry, um, I may have um, inadvertently shared the wrong thing. Oh, here we go. Oh. oh, okay. Let's see, we got three kids digging. We got the garden fill dirt, garden pond liner on five. Yeah, five, here we go. All right, all right, is that showing? No, I don't see it. Um... All right, sorry, folks. There we go. Okay, I got the pond liner. That's the largest, thickest pond liner that's, uh, they say 20 years minimum. I think that's 50 years. This, this is good stuff. It's called EDPM rubber. I got it at the, uh, uh, it's called Sunset Gardens or Sunrise Gardens, something like that. Sun Valley, it's by Theater Pain Foundation. And they have big rolls of this uh, pond liner. And I got one for the creek. I mean, it's it's long and slender. I got 40 feet of it. And uh, it cost me a pretty penny. And But I laid it all out over the fill dirt and the rock. Actually, not all the rock. I laid rock to the sides of the pond liner, which you're supposed to do on a creek or a water feature. You put the rock... Uh, on, on either margin to hold it down. And this is after I dug the channel. The channel was dug in the center there. You can see there it's kind of a uh, kind of a hole there. And uh, we got I got that put in. So uh, we can move that along. Yeah, that now it's shaping up as you can see, the pond liner in the center. These are all the donated rock, most of them. At the top, we have this rock I bought with the Conze grant. There's some large rock up in here, and I envisioned the kids sitting on those, for example. This is a stone bridge, one large piece of heavy sandstone. And uh, we started planting right away around this. I put in a lot of sand. Besides the rock, I put in a lot of sand around the margins and uh, started planting it out. And this is maidenhair fern, for example. I wanted to have a series of little waterfalls. At the top is the top waterfall comes in here. The pipe, uh, there was this uh, pipe right here at the top. And uh, it's all hidden by uh, driftwood that I brought in, for example. After a storm in Long Beach, I'd go down to the beach and I'd get a lot of driftwood and put it at the top of a creek. I wanted it all natural looking. As you could see, it looks pretty natural. I, you know, I like the look. And I, I moved things around till they were done to my satisfaction. <laughs> and, uh, you know, wanted to have that, you know, it's designed and all that, but I, you know, it looks like the rocks tumbled together and whatever. Uh, this is uh, Iris. Uh, 
This is Juncus ziphioides, for example, uh, the uh, iris leafed uh, rush. And there's a lot of spike rush in here. Uh, the, um, what is it? The, uh, the genus, I always forget, forget. It's the, it's the species I remember. It's uh, macrostachia, spike rush, common spike rush. I also have, uh, you can see, you'll see the later pictures. I've got a lot of monkey flower in it, seep spring monkey flower and other little goodies in there. So on, uh, I also used uh, waterfall foam to, to make sure all the leaks were on the, uh, were sealed on the sides. That's a product you buy, it's like a fiberglass foam and you can, uh, I learned a lot, of course. I didn't know about putting a, you know, a creek together, but doing it expertly, you know, so there's no leaks and <clears throat> screw ups, pardon the expression. So we can move this along. Okay, now here's the story. <laughs> this is my buddy, Joey, the carpenter. <clears throat> I paid him for some work, but a lot of work he did as a volunteer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I did a day's uh, volunteering at the Mojave Desert Land Trust in Joshua Tree. I love those folks. Medina Asbel works there. She was formerly the head of the nursery at uh, Theodore Payne Foundation. They nabbed her. They brought her to Joshua Tree. I kind of followed along later. And uh, I helped them with their, their demonstration garden in the back, which you ought to see someday. You've got to go up to the Mojave Desert Land Trust sometime and look at their grounds or go to one of their plant sales. They sell desert plants that nobody else sells. And I've got a large desert section in Presque, so I want their plants, okay? Nobody else sells them. I've been giving seed from the plants to Theodore Payne Foundation to make their own desert plants. So there that, there that is. <clears throat> anyway, we we're working together with these. Uh, we were working on steps made out of juniper, juniper wood, okay? Now, I've never heard of such a thing, but I wanted them right away for Presque. Had to have juniper. This is reclaimed juniper from uh, Eastern Oregon, okay? Uh, it's similar to our Juniperus californicus, so that's good enough for me. Um, I had the, I went to the oldest lumber yard in Los Angeles to get this juniper. Nobody else carried it in all of the greater Los Angeles area. So this is in South Los Angeles. It uh, started in the 1920s, and I got two big beams of Jupiter. Joey cut them up for me, and he made stepping stone. Uh, uh, steps up to the large um, uh, footbridge, the uh, stone footbridge, okay? So we can move the, to the next one. Okay, that's the finished product at the time. I think it looks elegant and handsome and all that good stuff. And this juniper, by the way, is similar to cedar and redwood, maybe even better about the rot, long-term rot. Juniper, and who knew, right? So I'm, I'm glad it's there, and it's going to be, it's still doing well, and, uh, you know, a couple of years later, and I look forward to it staying that way for years. So go ahead. Oops. There we go. Uh, there's the baked potato boulder before everything else went in. I wanted to show you, I wanted to feature this especially, this 1,700-pound rock. <clears throat> I didn't like the way the guy with a fork, you see the plywood that the forklift came in on? He destroyed a bench, by the way, coming in uh, to, to deliver this uh, large boulder. I didn't like the way it was exactly, so I kept lifting it with a lever and fulcrum, right? And I showed the kids one day, this is how you, you, know, you could move a large object. You know, you put the little fulcrum under it, you put a big beam between the fulcrum and the object, and you can lift it if the fulcrum is long enough, right? And remember what Archimedes said, right? So you can move it along. Oh, this is the waterfall at the top of the garden uh, in the completed uh, uh, creek. And uh, I didn't want to show many videos because uh, 
I was told that they don't show well and all that. As you could tell by that one video we tried, I guess they don't work very well on these or something. Yeah. Or maybe they, we could find a way to make them work or whatever. Here's the spike rush here, and you could see the little monkey flower growing in right in the water, the seep spring monkey flower. It'll grow on the margins and in the water, and it gets inundated <coughs> too, by completely by water. So this is 800 gallons per hour from the bilge pump. While the so, well, there's sun on the solar panels, obviously. It has to be sun. Go ahead. Okay, this is my friend Taylor Parker, who actually did a presentation at uh, at your uh, chapter, the Native Plant Society, and he's putting in some spike rush. I think it is. I can't. I don't can't quite see what he's putting in there, but uh, that was a fun day. It was uh, just one of these great uh, experiences, uh, just uh, fabulous, where we just kind of talked about the creek and uh, how fabulous nature was and all that good stuff. Taylor was one of the guys I helped on the Colorado Lagoon restoration. And we're presently putting in a large channel from the Long Beach Marina, an open saltwater channel that's going to run to the Colorado Lagoon to have this fresh washing back and forth. The lagoon's going to be washed back constantly with fresh salt water. Everybody's really excited about it in Long Beach. We can move along. There's my wife sitting at the, um, uh, the, the completed creek. This is the wooden footbridge that I created for the kids. They love crossing this. You can tell as the kids love bridges, right? And they want to cross the bridges right away. But they also want to scramble on the rocks, as you'll see presently. It's my wife sitting on this large sycamore log. It's hollow, and it's it's charred inside from, from an ancient fire. So I, that was all part of the feature there. I envisioned frogs going in there later and all this kind of stuff. I hear frogs um, in the garden now. There are actually two I heard. So there's two chorus frogs presently. And I want to start another colony in there. The other colony I had to kind of take out of there because we had a neighbor complain of all things about our frogs creaking at night. How am I doing on time here? Am I, uh, is this too much or too little? Is it okay? How are we doing? Feedback. <laughs> Nobody? I thought it seems like you're about halfway through. And, uh, you should half probably, yeah, you're half an hour in. Okay, I'll wind it up. How's All right. that? All right. Yeah, these are the when kids. Yeah, these are the kids scrambling on the rocks. That's what I like to see. And, uh, you know, just I when the teacher turns them loose, the teacher will have like some maybe a lesson, a structured lesson, but then she'll turn them loose. And what they want to do first off is jump on the creek and start scrambling on the rocks and bridges. You don't have to tell kids what to do. If you show them a creek with running water and rock and all that, they are going to jump all over it. No instruction. And you know that, right? And that's part of the fun of the garden. And, you know, they're, they're going to look at what they want to look at, right? So there that is. Uh, next photo. Yeah, these are some Boy Scouts jumping all over the creek. I've got driftwood at the top, as you can see it. And uh, let's see, move along. I love this picture. It's a little girl contemplating the waterfall up there. She did that on her own. She wanted to sit on a rock, which I wanted to see someday, the kids selecting a rock and just sitting there and looking at the waterfall which she did, and I had the snapper picture. It's just perfect. Yeah, this is the completed creek. This is one of Taylor Parker's photos. You could see the large display of uh, seep spring monkey flower here. I think there's two species in there. There's a large, a smaller flowered species, a subspecies uh, that I, went, I once collected seed out of the Little Rock uh, recreation area, the Little Rock Creek uh, above in the hills above Palmdale. 
this is how it all looks together. The footbridge, the large rock, uh, and the mule fat has gone crazy in the back. I'm gonna, I'm half, I'm trimming all that, by the way, even though it's a good pollinator plant, it's too much for maintenance, okay? It's, it's, it's good for a wild area, but not even the garden I have, which is large area, it's too much, as you can see. Too much mule fat. And there's the driftwood at the top of the creek. We can do the last picture. So that's from the top. I have these large hunks of driftwood there. You can see it's going all the way down to the pond. We have benches in the garden. You can see it's a very large garden with uh, uh, lots of uh, hills and dales and swales, okay? It's not a flat garden. I, wanted, I didn't want flat, I wanted terrain because nature has terrain. It's got depressions in the, you know, in the ground and it's got hillocks and hills and then it's got flat and then it's got everything. And so there it is. Questions? Comments? Yeah, you can comment in chat and uh, I'll read it. Uh, Kathy yeah. was saying she loved the Facebook page. Say again? Uh, Kathy, Kathy Zeitz was saying that she loves your Facebook page. Oh, thank you very much. I enjoy putting that together. My last yeah. picture was of the uh, acatillo I planted and how I'm sp uh, spreading out the branches because they come tight and all that. I enjoy that. Thank you. Yeah, and then uh, Dee is saying, uh, she says, Hi, Mike, I jotted a note that the garden started 28 years ago. Mm -hmm. This creek was the result sure. of the Conzi grant, she asked. And a recent what? edition. So Same I guess she's asking. She's. I think she's asking whether the creek was the result of the Conzi grant, and if it was a recent edition. Yeah, it's recent, and it's from the Conzi uh, Conzi grant of seven thousand one hundred dollars. And like I said, it was. If I didn't have all this rock donated, see the large rock that I'm pointing to here, the bottom there, to the right of the driftwood. This large rock at the top. I bought that, but the rest of the rock here along the sides and a lot of that, a lot of that was donated. If I'd had to buy all that landscape rock, you can imagine how much it would cost, many hundreds of dollars. So uh, there it is. Uh, I'd, I'd like to buy, I'd like to get another Conzi grant to make a large uh, uh, permanent cover for the fish pond, uh, like a large cage, for example, that they use maybe at, uh, you know, in aviaries and and in uh, monkey houses and zoos. Uh, we'll see about that though. And to get it all cleared out here uh, without a lot, with a lot of uh, outside labor. I try to do everything myself and with volunteers, but like removing all this mule fat and grinding the stumps out, that's a little much. I need outside labor usually, okay? Uh, now you have an open house periodically, do you not? Yeah, two open houses, one, uh, this year is uh, April 26th, Sunday is the first one. And then uh, on the very next Sunday, the subsequent Sunday, April 2nd, from one to four, both days. And so you can make it to either one. I have two of them. So if people miss one, they can come to the other one. Yeah, and, you say yeah. April 26th and then May 2nd? April 2nd, the very okay. next Sunday. The first one is March 26th. Correct. So it's done usually with peak, of course, with peak wildflower season. We want to have a nice wildflower display. And at the end of March, you do. And in, er, into April, you do. And all of April. I could have had it all of April, but I have to work around Easter, for example. You see? Because people might not come at... Uh, uh, they're not going to come on Easter, a lot of people, okay? So I, I work around Easter is one thing. March 26th. Yeah, March 26th. My wife is reminding me it's March 26th, yes. It's March 26th and April 2nd from 1 to 4. Three Mike, this, this is David Berman. Um, yes. I want to thank you for your presentation. Uh, also, want to just uh, put in a plug for your open house. It is the best. It is absolutely worth going to. Um, thank you, David. But um, I think uh, two other comments. Uh, one, 
it's incredible what you do with so little money. Um, other garden projects have budgets 10 times yours and don't look nearly as nice. But most importantly, most importantly of all, Mike, the fact that you have those young people there and you're exciting them, young people about native plants. It's my that to me, that, that to me is, is just the miracle of the whole thing. And okay. that, that is fabulous. Thank you very much. It, uh, I feel like I'm contributing. And that's the best feeling of all. And uh, I need to tell everybody I'm starting a nonprofit to put more of these on school gardens. Uh, I, I wanted to do one 20 years ago, but I, there wasn't the interest there is now. Now there's interest all over. And uh, what's the link I'm to your starting. nonprofit? What, what's the link to your nonprofit? What's the you, what web page? To the nonprofit? Yeah. Okay, we have a domain name, so I can tell you what it is now. <laughs> There's a website and I'm working on it. It's repetitious, so uh, uh, don't judge me yet. I mean, I've got some some good stuff on it, some good info. We're calling it Wild for Schools. Get it? <laughs> There's a little pun in there. I think it works. Wild for Schools. I'm putting wild at schools. And uh, I talk about how it's therapeutic to immerse kids in nature. And it's good for their education. You can do things beyond the scope of the ordinary classroom. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I think if there's more questions, sure. uh, I think you're going to hang around. We, if you put them in chat, uh, audience, uh, we can get back to uh, Mike after yep. Bill gives his talk. So Bill, I, I think you said that your preference was uh, for me to run through the uh, pages. Yeah, that'd be great if you don't mind. I will do that. Let me get it open here. Okay. I just want to say, Mike, I'm really impressed with what you've done there. That's just a beautiful setup. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. I love it. Yeah, when, yeah I can tell. It, yeah, when it flows from love and enthusiasm, you can't miss, right? Right. Exactly right. Exactly. Uh, All right, I'm just waiting for it to load in, Bill. Okay, that's fine. I'm not familiar with Lumen. Is that a, a PDF player? It, it is, but this is my wife's computer. So uh, there's a few things that I am not familiar with about it. Uh, my, my work computer isn't suitable for this. Okay. Um, if it's a pinch, I can bring it up and display it, I guess. Yeah, it, you know what? I'm having a bit of a, a stumble here, so... It, it might be smoother if you just did it. That way you can control the pagination anyway. Okay. Uh, Let me see how I do that here. Don't go away. While we wait for that, um, Adela had a question for Mike. She was asking if there's any issues with rocks coming loose when the kids climb on them, or if the foam you put in kind of helps with that. Mike, you might be on mute if you're talking. Uh, he's not on mute, but he might have stepped away from the computer. So we'll just get back to that. So can you see the screen yeah. now? Brent, what do you need? Uh, there's a just, question coming your way. Yeah, there's a question from somebody while uh, Bill gets his uh, presentation up. Somebody asked if there was an issue with the kids, uh, with the rocks coming loose when the kids climb on them. Oh, not so far. Not so far. And That's now good. here's the thing. If a teacher gets those kids in, they're responsible. If they think it's okay for the kids to jump all over the rocks, then it's okay. Now I tell the kids, be careful. Because, you know, if, you know, make sure a rock isn't wobbly, right? So we're warning them. And, uh, you know, at a certain point, kids have to find out for themselves. And, you know, take these minor risks, you know. At the same time, believe me, I don't want parents up in arms about something I'm doing in the garden that might be endangering their child. You know what I mean? So you play it by ear. 
most of the time it's fine. Once in a while, a child will get into a cactus or something or, you know, like beaver tail cactus recently and all that, but we take care of that at the garden. It's not a problem usually, okay? Can you, can you see my charts now? Yes, I, I can see them. Others? Yes, we can see them. Yeah, Why? yeah, yes. Okay, okay great. Well, let me, <clears throat> I'm gonna nice. be, oh, oh, thank you. I'll be talking about the, what we call the Beautiful Ionata Bay Project. And uh, what I've got a picture of here is, this is not an area we're, we're working in, but it illustrates uh, what, the, what this open space uh, right on the bluff tops of, around Palos Verdes and uh, Palos Verdes Estates look like. And basically this is just unmaintained uh, trails, unmaintained, I mean, the weeds growing in there and such. And that's pretty typical of this area. So if that was something that I was uh, trying to do something about and led to the, led to the uh, starting of this uh, project. Let me go ahead here. Okay, so basically uh, this started project started in 2014 and basically it started with uh, presentations to the local community and discussions with the local community about what we might do to make this make this, some of these bluff tops look better. And uh, so we're trying to do trying to really preserve and enhance the quiet beauty of bluff tops and major open space areas in, in uh, Palos Verdes Estates. And uh, we wanted to formalize the walking trails. And as you recall from the picture, it was there before. They're just they're just dirt trails right now. And you know, I like dirt I like dirt trails too, but they do turn to mud. And when it rains, fortunately, we don't get a ton of rain. But when it we get rain, it turns to mud. So that's a problem. And these are great areas. I mean, many of many I'm sure many of you have visited all over the world, and uh, as we have, and uh, we come back home. This is one of the most spectacular areas in the. In the, on the planet, and yet these uh, this open space areas that should look nice doesn't, and so we're trying to do something about that. We also want to minimize long term maintenance and water usage, which is uh, something we all worry about. And we're using drought want to use drought tolerant plants to uh, that are really from coastal areas of the Palos Verdes Peninsula, and uh, fortunately the conservancy has been very good about uh, helping us with that. So this kind of gives you an idea of what the where the open space area is. All these little green areas you see are basically open space areas in Palos Verdes Estates, and, um, and so that circle there shows you where our project is. And um, and it's a, it's right now it's we've done about well it would be two acres when we're about done here, um, and um, you can see that there's an awful lot of stuff that could be done. And our hope was that uh, potentially. Um, uh, these uh, two acres uh, of the 302 acres that we I estimate of open space might be used to uh, as an illustration of what we might do in some of these areas. Next chart. Oops, I'm just running that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is where this is the Lanada Canyon area that where we're working, and uh, this is what it looked like beforehand. Uh, on the uh, left hand side, you can see that it's uh, just covered with basically weeds. We get uh, foxtails, as I mentioned, in there quite heavily when it. When they grow and Russian thistle, yeah, and it's just, it's really basically not maintained. The city does come through and mow down whatever grows there once, maybe once or twice a year, or did. And um, so we wanted to fix that. And on the right side, you can see that it looks like there's a little bit of a dip in the property and something on the other side. There is a very steep uh, canyon right there that separates these two pro properties. And I'll show you what that looks like too. But uh, that also gives you an idea of what the open space looks like there, and that's in Lanada Bay. Um, and this property is across from Lanada Bay Elementary School. We had a notion as uh, that we wanted to really make this a visible site, and being across from the school is a good spot. Secondly, uh, um, Marlene Breen, who's the more or less the designer of the project, uh, wanted to make take advantage of this site as an educational for an educational component. And you know, we built in uh, some factors for that as well. Uh, next chart. Oops, I'm again, I got to stop that. <laughs> okay, this is so this was uh, phase one. <clears throat> and again, on the bottom of the picture is the school property. And that's Paseo Del Mar and Paseo Lenado up on the upper part. And uh, so phase 1A, that one you can see actually there is a little trail through there. This was actually uh, early in. Uh, the, in that particular process, when we're putting that trail in, those little spots you can see are uh, actually plants that are uh, now much larger. And um, this area here, this uh, up on the top, on the right side, that's a big where a drain out 
uh, when our drain exits there and it forms flows down this canyon down towards the ocean. That canyon is not very not very deep here, but it gets very deep down right uh, close to the ocean and can be quite hazardous if somebody messes around with the slopes there. So in any event, our phase 1A then, our, our total area here is about an acre of uh, uh, land that we would be modifying uh, that excludes this, uh, this particular, these particular canyon areas. And um, we couldn't do anything in the canyon areas. As you know, that's a blue line stream, if you know what that is, which means that you have to have special permissions to touch that. Uh, we didn't uh, want to go do that particular part of the project. And so in any event, um, so that's the area that we're working in. And uh, Marlene came up with a beautiful plan for that. And this gives you a feeling what we were planning to put in. Uh, the upper part, you can see that's the trail that you saw in the earlier picture. And our goal was to potentially extend this uh, particular part further down towards the coast. And, um, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is, so this is phase 1A up here, and this is phase 1B. And you can see this little area right down here where it looks like a little island sitting out there. Uh, that is an island. It's got cactus and so forth in it. And the school, again, is down here. We uh, put lots of stones around here so you can get a full classroom of students out here to um, you know, basically enjoy the area. We uh, uh, know that students come in and there are lots of lizards and so forth in here now, whereas there really wasn't much of, much of life in here at all. And now butter, lots of butterflies. and. Uh, 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 Cynthia Wu has taken beautiful pictures of those and has been very helpful in keeping this place maintained. So, but this, both of these projects now have are in and they've been in there a while and uh, and they're, you know, they're nicely nicely cared for by my wife and, and uh, Cynthia and others. And uh, so they're they're good. And if you haven't visited one of these sites, you ought to do that. I recommend it. Okay, so phase 1A is on the north side of the canyon. That was completed in February of 2018. And phase 1B, which is on the south side, and that's directly across from the school, was completed in July of, 28, in July of 2018. And uh, we uh, actually were really pleased that the, uh, this, this project was awarded the Community Garden Award by a Community Garden Award by the Silver Spur Garden Club in June of 2019, which I thought was quite nice. So again, we're, it, is a, it is quite a nice place. It's spring now. Well, we're getting a lot of rain and, and in the spring, this place is gonna be alive with, with flowers. So you should really come and take a look. Okay, so phase two, which is what I'll talk about tonight, uh, is um, uh, this area that's down below here. And I meant, as I mentioned, we were planning to do, uh, extend this trail on the north side uh, down towards the ocean. And uh, some of the people over here were telling us that, no, 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 we don't want you to touch that area, that's natural. And uh, we told them that, well, it's, it's natural weeds, but it's not natural, not native plants. They're, they just, you know, they, you know, they just, they're weeds. And muddy trail. And it turns a muddy trail. Well, they weren't, we not going to hear it. They said, this is natural over here. We don't want you to mess with that. So we said, oh, well, we didn't want to play with the politics. So we just came over to this side and, and created phase two. And on this picture, by the way, you can see the area that's now and that was in phase two and uh, where these uh, various little islands and so forth are. And again, the school is right down here. So this is quite convenient for them. We also put in uh, a, a decomposed granite trail along the, uh, uh, the border here, right along the curb, uh, to, so that people, when they drop their kids off, could, have a, could walk on something other than uh, dirt. And that seems to be, have been well accepted as well. Uh, that existing oleander bush doesn't exist anymore, I'm happy to say. Okay, so here's the plan for phase two. Uh, again, Marlene did a really nice job on this one. And uh, this basically looks like what we've got in. That's about a 450 foot trail that uh, goes from where we connected in up here to the uh, phase uh, 1B. And now it go goes down here. We've got rocks and seating areas here. We've got uh, uh, some, some in the city wanted us to actually put in some uh, grassy areas, and so we've uh, tried to blend those in too. The, uh, the views is very important through here, as you can imagine, so we try to keep the plants low. So Marlene's picked a lot of those, and I'll show you what those plants are in a second. Plants are, I should say. It's, <clears throat> so this is a decomposed uh, granite trail, and um, uh, it includes rocks for seedings. Uh, we actually uh, 
the uh, Kanzi grant for this one helped us uh, with the water line primarily and plants. But we have a water line that uh, water uh, hose connection points every 50 feet along here. So where we can uh, hook in hoses and uh, set up a sprinkler system or hand water if we need to do that. Uh, we have really not watered too much on this. We have actually have used sprinkler systems uh, maybe a couple of times, but primarily we hand water it. And we're going to be planting here again soon. Uh, our plan is to use uh, the rains as the starting point for water. And hopefully we'll get a lot of rain here so we can have well watered uh, uh, soil to work in. And uh, we're all using low, slow, uh, low growing plants. Okay, so here are some of the uh, plants. And again, uh, Marlene is online. And I think if there are questions on the plants uh, that she selected or anything <laughs> like that, you'll have to ask her because I'm not, I don't know anything about plants. <laughs> I hate to admit that, but my wife yells at me about that now and then, but it's, you know, I'm an engineer. I work on space debris and asteroids and things, and I don't know anything about plants, but I admire them. Let's put it that way. Don't know what they are, but if I admire these things. And, uh, and this is, we have two palettes. This is the second. This is a grassy palette. And uh, I feel blessed to have such a talented person as Marlene is and Cynthia and others who uh, really appreciate and and uh, take advantage of this and uh, capture some of the wildlife and, and the butterflies and birds and so forth you see here. And as I say, uh, Cynthia's got some spectacular pictures of butterflies that she's found in here. Okay, so talk about uh, building. So here you can see some of the people we had out uh, working on this. On the bottom right, um, it turns out that Palos Verdes Estates has a, a rock pile, I guess you could say, that's over on one of its coastal areas, and uh, they authorized us to take some of the rocks. And so those kids you see, and along with a few other really strong people, um, I'm in the picture, but you know I'm certainly not on the same category as that. Uh, these kids are members of the lacrosse team and the and the the uh, swimming team at uh, at uh, Dallas nice. Party's High School, and they came. And these guys can can lift these big rocks. Uh, one kid can lift 400 about 450 pounds. And uh, I don't see how a kid that young can lift that much. But anyway, uh, they did. And they put the, these rocks in. This was all hand, hand done. The only thing that was not done by hand is the decomposed granite, granite trail. So we would lay the uh, grants and put the, grant, the uh, stones in place. Students would help us with that. And then um, we hired a company to come in and, and build the trail for us. The uh, fourth is what he can do. Yeah. But he didn't pick up that heavy. Yeah, he may not have, he may not picked up some barbs correcting shoot. He may not have picked up anything that heavy, but he it, some of the stuff was bigger than what I could lift. So oh, that yeah. doesn't say a lot, I think. So <laughs> so anyway, you can see we got volunteers out planting and we've had uh, numerous volunteer days where we come in and we we work on the site. So the plants you can see, Marlene's laid them out where we want them to be. Um, and uh, so we will come in and do that. We've got uh, the city provides mulch for us, uh, so we can uh, mulch it as much as we want. Uh, the city provides water. We actually have to put the water connection points in, as I mentioned. But the city does provide water for us, and uh, the city provided all the stones, although we had to, we had to, uh, they moved them for us once we picked them. So in any event, that's that was really fun and very rewarding. I think everybody really enjoyed that. So that's what it looks like today. And you can see a lot of these plants are, are still quite young. Uh, we've got another um, a big planting day, hopefully coming up this weekend. So if any of you are urging, you want to come out and help uh, dig some holes and plant some plants, uh, this is a great little spot to do that. And um, so we'll be, our planting day start at nine o'clock and go to about 1130 on Saturday morning, the first Saturday of every uh, every month. And we, we'll, we may go, may go more frequently if you, we, have a need to do that. And then uh, you can see this canyon I'm talking about that's right over here on the right side. And it's quite steep uh, through here. And, and also some of the plants along here are not plants that we like, uh, but we really don't have, the, don't have the authority or the permission to go in and touch those. We're hoping to get, uh, get that done one of these days, but maybe through working with the city and potentially the conservancy if they're interested. But on the left, bottom left, you can see one of the connection points for the, for the water. Okay, so the status is uh, we're doing planning and maintenance ongoing, and that's basically on all this property. Uh, Cynthia and Barb and others are involved heavily in that, and they really do a great job of keeping it up. And it's getting better, I think, 
uh, when we started uh, on uh, phase one, we had just we were just overrun with weeds, and we actually had to hire somebody to come in, and, and they spent what about two weeks, uh, eight hours a day for two weeks, uh, just weeding, and uh, we finally got that out, and I'm sort of under control. That's been a big help. But I think primarily here, I just want to thank the support for the and the South Coast chapter of the Native Plant Society for what they've done for this project. And those are two things. In phase 1B, we got about $16,000 uh, to cover preparing the site, irrigating and the irrigation system and planting and maintaining the plants. And, and the total for phase one was around 80,000. The rest of that money we got from primarily from donations, but we got a lot from, um, we had, had smaller, a few smaller grants. The PTA and the school donated some. Uh, we had a, something from the National Geographic Society, believe it or not. And, uh, and then on phase two, of course, it was to cover the cost of the irrigation lines and the native uh, uh, drought tolerant plants. And so uh, the total cost of that is around $37,000. We've got a little bit more to spend. We need to, we had to do a little bit of, uh, we found there's one little prop part of the property where nothing, we can't get anything to grow particularly. So we had to have that, uh, uh, turn, the soil turned over a bit and, and uh, uh, improved, shall we say. And again, if you have any questions on that, Marlene can answer them. And, um, and I think that's about it. So um, again, I think some of the principles in maintaining the property are here. My wife is online and Marlene is online and Cynthia, I think, is there. And uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. That's it. Yeah, I so I'd encourage, uh, encourage those in attendance to put their question in chat or um, just speak up or raise your hand. Um, I, I've got a question for you. Sure. I, I'm, I'm wondering if the, uh, the eighty thousand dollars, for instance, includes um, kind of the estimate of in-kind donations, or if that was just cash that passed through your hands, and that's and in addition to that, you had donations of things like the rock from the city. Um, that was um, that for the eighty. A good part of the eighty thousand dollars was we actually had a contractor do a big chunk of phase 1A. The purpose was to get something in place so we could demonstrate to the community how this might look, what we intended to do uh, for the rest of the project. And uh, so we actually paid for, the, for them to come in. They actually laid the stones, even though the city supplied them, and they built the trails and uh, they actually planted the plants on that side. And they put the, we actually used the drip system over there. And, um, and then on phase 1B, we backed off a bit. We actually did more of that work ourselves. Um, and we put a drip, drip line system in for the initial watering. And, uh, but we still had the, uh, the decomposed kind of trail built. That's, that's, that is an expensive proposition if you put in like a 400, 400 foot long trail. That's a decomposed granite, three inch, inches thick, eight feet wide. It's, it's fairly expensive. <clears throat> so no, those were... Uh, those were that's the cash there wasn't much in kind stuff there at all okay so there's a, in the chat there's a comment from d gustafson she, yeah, says, I, she says i love beautify uh, lunata bay it's such a beautiful space and she's so impressed uh with the adler force <laughs> uh in the collaboration D is an expert there. She also knows what she's doing. <laughs> and again, it's people like that who have made this thing work, I think, because again, I don't know anything about the plants, but there are people who really do, and they, they've helped a lot, and really, they are involved heavily in this. Even Tony Baker has showed up to help us on a few times, so that's been quite nice. Oh, and he's here tonight, too. Yeah, hey, Tony. Uh, she notes that uh, Cynthia is really great at encouraging the kids' involvement with this space, as well as the tireless worker. Yeah. So it sounds like there's some good uh, a good core of volunteers there. Oh yes, we have a good core, and then the conservancy uh, they have they uh, advertise volunteer days for us, and we can get. Mm, I guess we've had as many as fifty volunteers out there at one time. We have a number from the community to come in, and we augment uh, those with the conservancy people, and um, and they've done fabulous work. But now it's fifteen. That's yeah, so I think right now we're down to about 15 is what we think is optimal. Yeah. Although we've got a lot of plants to plant this weekend, so we may shoot for some more. Yeah. Uh, is there is there anyone who's got a question from the audience? You can raise your hand or just go off of mute and speak up. Oh, we got Mike. Hey, Mark. Oh, go I'll go off mute, Mike. You can't hear. Yeah, I think you're mute. 
Mike, you're muted. There we go. Now that's better. How's that? That's much better. Okay, here we go. Um, I've walked along that spot many times. Excellent. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, many times. I'll drive from Long Beach uh, on a day where I'm not going way out there somewhere. I'll go to PV and I'll hike around, right? Great. And I grew up in the area. I walked along that place many times uh, for years, and I thought, yeah, to put in a lot of natives in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can spot these too. It's it, and now you're doing it, so that's that's really wonderful. I'd like to join you some Saturday morning. Just uh, excellent. Yeah, oh, come yeah. anytime. Oh, absolutely. I want to uh, meet you. If you're, you're there every time, right? Yes. Barb and I are there. Sounds good. So I'll see you there some Saturday. I'll just pop in there sometime. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be good. To have absolutely. You. It'd be wonderful. Yeah, good. But you know, it's really interesting. Um, the number of the people in, in the peninsula on the, in Palos Verdes Estates have really thought that what we're doing is just not natural. It's just not natural. They just don't understand the problem. And I'm sure you've run across that too, but. Oh, sure. Sure. It's just very disappointing, <laughs> quite honestly. You yeah, know, yeah, people don't understand what we're, you know, what, what oh, is native yeah. and what's not and what the benefits are. I know some people get it right away though. They'll walk down the sidewalk by our garden and they'll say, yep. Ooh, what is this? Yep. Is this a nature center on the campus? I go, yeah. Wow, man, this is cool. I know it's true. It right away, they get it right away. Yeah. So some walk by, eh, yawn. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's Those right. My allies, you're yeah, my yeah. ally. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're doing better though. You know, I think, yeah, I think we are. We yeah, get, I think so. We we get the same kind of comments. You know, I know Barb and Cynthia and others. Uh, you know, we have people walking the trails now and. And uh, they they'll stop and congratulate us on what what's what it looks like there. And when it's, oh, people bring their wedding parties out for pictures of, uh, you know, yeah. for pictures amongst the native plants, it's wonderful. Oh, so, it's like the man who planted trees. That cartoon you ever see that? Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God, you gotta see that. Anyway, the man who planted trees. It's no, it's oh, it's wonderful. But anyway, that's an aside. Yeah, you if you build it, they'll come. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, and they, they are, I think it's, it's, it's getting there. And I think we're, we're making progress, but we, we're doing an eight year clip and you got that many, it's going to be a long time. Well, it's, you know, it's for the planet, wherever we got, you know, wherever we can do it. Exactly right. No, I agree 100%. You know, you know what is it? Uh, think globally and act locally. I mean, not, you know, they haven't gotten a better slogan than that ever. You know, you're going to do it locally, but think about the whole planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Megan writes in chat. She says, great work, Mike, Bill, and Barb. She's glad to hear plants are getting into the ground this season. Yeah, last year was a bit of a, a of a loss with the drought, was it not? Yeah. Did you uh, defer planting for a year, Bill? Uh, we did slow down. We got only a few in. That's one reason why it looks a little peaked out there right now. But uh, we were waiting for the rains to come. And fortunately, we're really getting the rains now. So <laughs> we want to take advantage of that. And the other is quite interesting, though. We didn't water uh, phase one at all, I don't think. Yeah. Through all that drought, we didn't water it. And those plants are, have survived and done, you know, they didn't quite blossom as much as we might like, but they are not dead and they seem to be doing fine. So uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing uh, what, these, how, what these plants can take. Do you have a plaque or anything that tells the names of the plants or the purpose of it? City won't let us do it. Uh, matter of fact, when we won that award from the native, let's see, the uh, Silver Spur Garden Club, they had a really nice little sign, you know, we wanted to put on the property. And we were only able to leave it on there for uh, about an hour. City, <laughs> does, city doesn't let uh, let you put plant, plaques on anything. Weird mm. little place. But All people right. beg to have a sign as to what this plant's name is and so forth. Yep. Nope, can't do it. Yep. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so Z writes, uh, she's talking about um, people walking by and wondering why uh, the land isn't a, a soccer field or something. She says the same people, thing happens at White Point. People come by and wonder why it isn't a park with a grass lawn or a vegetable garden. So it sounds like you've got a universal experience there. Yeah, you know, basically, you know, when White Point was for, uh, under discussion years ago, uh, you know, it, it was owned by the, of course, in, owned by the 
city of Los Angeles, I guess. Yes. And so, um, and they were having hearings on what to do with it. And uh, they'd had a few and the community had already always said they'd like to see it preserved. Um, but they had one final hearing and I, I attended that and basically told them that if they decided to leave it, if they wanted it to be uh, left as open space, then uh, the conservancy would come in and rehabilitate it at no cost to the city. And, uh, and that carried the day and we worked out, a, uh, worked out a plan with the city as to how we would do that and they've been very supportive of that. And uh, we now have a 25 year uh, agreement with the city. Uh, it's, you know, and we're in the process of renewing that now, but it's, uh, it basically allows us to go in and re, uh, restore the native plants. And if you walk in White Point now, it's, it's uh, every plant, almost every plant you see there has been planted by a human. And so it's really was a major restoration of work. That's 160 acres there. So, uh, but yeah, that was great. That was very satisfying when that happened. Yeah. And uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy writes that she, uh, she's noting that both uh, BLB and Prisk bring kids into the garden environment. And yes. she likes that a common theme. She's wondering if there's uh, any key learning that we can carry to schools or scout troops about these spaces. Key learning. Um, you mean the, the, uh, the, uh, the largest theme of all of it, or uh, the uh, the mission statements of these things, or what? Uh, you know what? I am not really sure. Maybe it go through. Feel free to interpret her question as you wish. Yeah, basically, uh, let me just say that one of the things that the Conservancy did back uh, in the early '90s, I guess, was uh, start a, a uh, an education program. It was, I think, third grade education program, and we now have that program. And I don't know. I, Megan, if Megan is still on, do you know how many schools are in that? She may be not on. I see her there, but hey, I'm on. she's on. <laughs> uh, twenty-six schools. So we have we have uh, that program in twenty-six schools now, and so basically, what that does is it brings in people who know things about plants and animals and so forth, and they give uh, pres little presentations to the students. And uh, the little school that's right across from where our project here, they come in and they take them on a walk uh, into, a, into the canyon, not into that part of the canyon, but up above. And uh, they talk to them about what plants they see and they give them a little, you know, a prize if they're able to identify some things. Actually gets the, the parents involved as uh, docents, which is quite nice too. So you're teaching both the kids and the parents. And uh, so that program has been around now since, uh, again, the early 90s, and it's been quite successful. Is so that only it, in Palos Verdes? Uh, no, they're not only in Palos Verdes, I don't think. Megan, no, you, we go with the Lamita and where else? Um, Megan, San do you know? Pedro? In San Pedro as well? Oh, yeah, San Pedro for sure. And as a matter of fact, the White Point site is one of those that uh, some of the San Pedro schools use. So, again, it's. Uh, that's I think bringing kids in is extremely important, and uh, you know actually Barb has done a little handbook uh, for uh, some of the education, you know, an educational handbook on this stuff, and uh, I think that's been been it's a good piece of work, but not a people a lot of people have it. Is that something you can yeah, share? Yeah, we got a new president. Um, or what is it? But just say something about the, what it is. Oh, it it just go it mm, well it just touches on various plants. It's about 88 pages long, so it actually covers uh, a lot of the history of how California natives came in and what happened to them with all the cattle that were here and so forth. Um, but there's lots of little questions in there for them to answer, and the, and, uh, the answers are in my book, and, and so that's for the teachers to use. And it was going to be used, but unfortunately, we got a new principal right when it was ready to be used and he says nope i'm more interested in computers and that kind of thing yeah but anyway i think so it's a it it's a nice piece of work and if any of you are interested in getting a copy of that i think it might be something that uh you might you'd be interested in yeah I'd love lots that. of little experiments and things so mike yeah. you like, like a copy yeah i'd like to uh yeah besides that but i wanted to add something about uh uh, what's good about kids in nature, I mentioned, I alluded to it, they've done many studies, even on the university level, yep. that immersing children in nature, whether it's nature, nature, 
such as in Palos Verdes in open space and in wildness, or in replicated nature, like Prisk Native Garden, yeah. where kids can be surrounded with nature, it teaches them things beyond the scope of the yeah. normal classroom and beyond the scope of any computer, uh, even virtual reality, I'd wager. I mean, you're gonna learn much more being surrounded by uh, trees and bees and lizards and birds and running water and yes. uh, crunching of gravel below the feet and uh, you can't and the smells of native plants the salvias yes. and the yes. artemisias you can't you can't do that in the classroom. That's right. And let me also add that one of the things I want to say about Wild for Schools is one of the things I want to do is to go into the disadvantaged areas mm -hmm. where the kids most need nature. There's this old notion that you should have a park or a wild open space within five minutes of any citizen in the United States for their edification. And this is the true for kids. Uh, the next project I was gonna do was in, uh, in uh, Little Cambodia area in West Long Beach. And some of those people are recent immigrants and there's children of recent immigrants and if you can imagine what the Cambodians went through in the last couple of decades and so, there's a lot of trauma over there. So one of the things that the principal was interested in, and even the district is talking about it now, they're thinking much more progressively about this, is that nature calms kids down. It, uh, it puts them in present time, you know, not in the past and not in the future, but right now with the butterflies and the plants and the smells. And it's just good for them in itself, you know, you know, and uh, but besides that, they do their own kind of special observations that they don't do on a computer or in a classroom or in a book. Yeah. Yeah. The observation skills are just tuned up very high yeah. and they'll get excited. They'll say, oh, a butterfly. Oh, a lizard. You don't do that in a classroom. You see, it's just different. It's on a different wavelength. So that's uh, the other selling point. I try to, when I get people in the open house that I try to, I try to invite uh, important people, quote unquote, political people, or maybe even a celebrity or two, if I can get them in there. And I try to like, I don't have to do much. A person who's kind of really attuned to this, they'll get it right away. Oh, we should do more of these right mm -hmm. away. School camp. The mayor of Long Beach, I got him and he got excited right away. He goes, oh, we got to do more of these. I thought I'd have to schmooze with him a while. Nope, <laughs> he got it right away. It's yeah. like, oh, we should have more of these right away. And I go, I'm going to stay in touch with him. He's now a U.S. representative, and I want to still, you know, talk to him about green places in our city and green places for schools. Enough said. Yeah, you know, we've had some high school kids that have gotten very involved in the in the conservancy and have I'd been nature to. walk. They brought nature walk, uh, brought their classes to nature walks and so forth. Excellent. And, uh, you know, I've done some references for some of those kids going off to very prestigious schools. So Absolutely. I think, it's, it, as you say, it's just, it's really amazing what they learn from that. Yes. And, you know, I was, I was brought up in, uh, in the, well, you know, in areas where we had uh, creeks to go catch frogs in and stuff like that. And, right. you know, to walk around and listen to the sounds of nature. And when we came out here, that was something that brought me to, Brought my wife and myself. She was brought up on a farm uh, to uh, to Palos Verdes. Wow. Was that people were saying that's uh, you know the only place there's any open space left. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, yeah. we came to Palos Verdes for that reason, and uh, we, we used to hike these areas. And I we were seeing seeing it be developed. Some of these land, lands that we really love. Yeah, and that's, what, that's actually what led to the uh, formation of the Land Conservancy. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe on a closing note, I'll uh, I'll just read. Um, D. Gustafson's comment in the in the chat about uh, kids lighting up in gardens. She says, "I've also seen this in inner schools, inner city schools with edible gardens. I've done some work with this. The kids feel yeah. attached to what they are doing and love to share with you." And at the time, she was volunteering, uh, maintaining an NPO's vegetable gardens through the summer months. She loved. She I, she says, "I love the opportunity for this with Southern California native plant gardens." So I think we're all in favor of that. Yep. Thank you, Dee, and thank you, Bill, and thank you, Mike. Okay, let's see. Mike, Mike, you wanted a copy of uh, Barb's thing. We'll send, send you that. How do we get it to you? Uh, 
Oh, gee. Uh, e email will work fine, or if you want to pick it up, we'll bring it email, down. Yeah, could email. you, Bill, could it's you email big. to membership at, at our, um, Brent will put our email in the chat, and then yeah, Brent we, could, we could send it out to our whole membership list. There you go. It's 80 pages. It's 80 pages long. It's a pretty good sized yeah. document. Uh, uh, but, but that, we do have it in a PDF form. Do you know how uh, big it is? Uh, yeah, I've got about six of them. Do you do a PDF? Uh, we do have a PDF of it, yes. Okay. I don't know quite the size, but we'll send, we'll okay. try it that way. And Saturday, we're going to have volunteer day on BLB. So if you did come, I'll bring a copy and you can have it. Oh, that is the first Saturday, right? It is. Yeah. Well, my good. Okay. I'm going to try to get there on Saturday. Okay. okay. All right. 9 to 1130. The heck with my schedule. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm now. I'm gonna see your. I'm gonna meet you guys out there. All right. Okay. And then Adela has noted that she um, sent yeah. Bill a message or request a copy too. So I'll take a copy to her there. down to the interpretive center. So I'll leave one down there for you, Adela. Okay. Good. All right. Sounds like there's broad interest in that. And if you don't mind, yeah, we, you know, um, unfortunately, the interpretive. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. The Interpretive Center is closed right now. The only part that's open is the gift shop. They'll be opening uh, soon. There's uh, there was some damage, water damage there. Oh, yeah. and they're repairing that. Okay. Uh, so, oh, you have a physical copy. That would be great. But I think you could leave it there. They may, I don't know if they have staff there, but if they do, you could leave it there for me. Thank you. We all do that. Yeah. Yeah, because they have a mail slot for me there that they can. Oh, right. That's great. Yeah. That'll make it easy. You have to promise me something because nobody, they, I haven't had that much feedback on it. So if you look at it and you think you see something that's just not right, please tell me. <laughs> okay, that's great. But thank you so much for doing that. Sure. My pleasure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, have you offered it to all our docents? No. No. Mm -hmm. No. She's she's been working with the local schools here. She did did send it over to a copy over to Chadwick, I think, right? Well, no, I sent it to the um, the board of directors for Peninsula Schools. Oh yeah, and yeah. they they took it and did dispense it to all the teachers. But mm. when I asked some of the teachers, "Well, did you receive it?" They didn't receive it. So. Although they said they were going to send it out, so I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, it'd be interesting to see what you're if you have to have comments on it. Uh, I yeah, I would love to know up. what you what if you find a mistake, please tell me. Oh, there. Yeah, you I there. will. And you know, we have super knowledgeable people. Uh, you're still a docent, right? Um, me, well, sort of. Oh, sort I, of. I don't. I don't lead kids anymore. No. Oh, okay. I'm old. <laughs> okay, so we'll we will send you a PDF to a membership at, at the, the website you've listed there, and um, and then you can distribute it if you want. Great, thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording now. Okay, sounds good. <laughs>